Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Book Review. In this episode, we're going to be talking about forecasting time series models with profit. Now, that's interesting, right? Because that essentially is a book that teaches you how to build, improve, and optimize your time series models at scale using Facebook's latest package called Profit. Now, if you haven't heard of Profit, it's a really uh, highly efficient and highly optimized, both statistical and deep learning based software package for time series models. And that's what this book is about. It's essentially giving you that tools, that knowledge, that terminology to be able to use and maneuver a package like this. So first things first, let's talk about the author. The name of the author is Greg Rafferty. And let me tell you guys this, this guy is an absolute living legend, right? He's a senior data scientist at Google. Uh, prior to that, he has been data scientist at IBM, as well as Facebook. This dude's been pretty much everywhere, handling different aspects of the project, a variety of different projects in the field of time series forecasting. So he's got a lot of experience. And then from the bottom of my heart, Greg, if you're watching this video, kudos to you, right? Thank you so much for doing this, and thank you so much for writing this title and sharing some of this experience you have with the audience. It's truly amazing to read this book because not only does it resonate with me a lot based on my experience, I also learned a lot from you. So definitely a big thank you and shout out to the author. So let's dive right in to the topic of today, which is to review this book. First topic I could come up, first thing first is how the book dive into the basics of time series modeling. Uh, you want to start with your good old school armor model, right? Armor is short for autoregressive moving average. These are features that you can use to basically help you predict uh, what's going on in the next. Whatever that xt is, or xt plus one is that you want to predict, these are the features, right? So what are they? Autoregressive is essentially the same x, but in the past. If you want to predict xt plus one, uh, perhaps xt is one of the autoregressor, xt minus one is another autoregressor, and so on and so forth, whatever you want to go in the past, they all work, right? You can use that. The second one is moving average. Moving average is easy to understand. It's that smoothing term, right? So you could take a window, I pick whatever you like, right? Three day, five day, 10 days, whatever you like. And then you can take the average of all of the axes in that 10 day window and then use that as your feature for predicting the xt, the xt plus one, so on and so forth. So these are your usual basic formulation of using what to predict what, right? And that's right there in the book. Right off the bat in chapter one, it gets you start with that. And then let's not stop there, right? You know, um, what happens when your data violates the OLS assumption? Um, so one big assumption is constant variance. If you violate that, and if the data violates that, which in financial data, based on my experience, it pretty much violates all the time, then you're going to have yourself this statistical phenomenon called heteroscedasticity. Now, what that means is your data set does not have constant variance. Now, in the finance world, of course, that happens a lot. Uh, if you look at stock price, it has the returns. And these returns have variances. And that variance is also called volatility. So whenever there's a shock in the economy, volatility shoots up, which then, of course, you're not going to have a constant variance because the volatility is constantly changing. So. With that being said, now you want to do this new model called ARCH, Auto Regressive Conditional Hydroscedasticity. So from there, you can start rolling your snowball and introduce a variety of different models, such as neural network, and then of course, eventually, Facebook software profit. So that's how things get started rolling, which I really appreciate because it gives you the foundation of what's going on in the world of time series forecasting before we dive into the code, before we dive into uh, these fancy packages. So part two basically is a combination of different chapters talking about different tricks up your sleeve when you're handling that software package and specifically trying to improve the forecasting capability 
of your time series model. First things first is the unit of analysis, right? If you're looking at a data frame such as an Excel spreadsheet, what is that row representing? Are we talking about a person? Are we talking about a test? What are we talking about, right? So that is the unit analysis. In time series data, uh, there's of course unit analysis that typically goes by time. But it doesn't have to be the same, right? I could be looking at daily data, you could be looking at weekly data. There's nothing wrong about that. The techniques is the same, but of course the conclusions are different. So uh, share with you guys an experience of mine. Uh, when I was on trading floor, new traders, they like to look at daily chart or some of them even look at 15 minute chart or five minute chart or even less than that, right? Um, some of the experienced traders is actually able to let go some of that recent volatility and they're like, hey, I'm not looking at that. I'm not even looking at anything below hourly chart or daily chart. I'm just gonna start off with daily chart and I'm gonna do weekly chart, three month chart, four month chart, so on and so forth. Now that's interesting because if you're looking at a longer time frame of unit of analysis, you are somewhat filtering certain volatility in the data, right? And what that does to your data is uh, perhaps you have a little bit more constant of a variance. Now, when I say more, I just mean that the variance in the weekly data, the monthly data, uh, perhaps is much more consistent, although not absolutely consistent, but much more consistent than daily data or 15 minute data or something much less than that. So, I'm not saying one way is absolutely correct. That's just one phenomenon I have observed, which I think is interesting and it's actually tied up to what this chapter is talking about, which is to use non-daily data. And it really resonated with me. So in addition to that, let's also talk about seasonality. Now that's interesting, right? Because right off the bat, when people hear the word seasonality, people are thinking, ah, the good old school seasons. And we're talking about spring, summer, fall, and winter. That of course can also be called seasonality, but in my experience, seasonality is not just the calendar year events, right? It's also about pattern recognition. If some pattern reappears itself or repeats itself every two months, let's talk about that, right? Let's put down the paper, let's analyze that. So something like that, it's interesting, right? It's really about recurring events. It doesn't have to be three months, right? So when I read this chapter, it's really interesting to see regularization, adding the controlling conditions. And then you can even play around the order of your Fourier transformation when you're doing seasonality. So all these are amazing techniques out there to break down line by line, formula by formula, what are some of the tricks you can do and how to improve your time series model. And then the next topic in this part two is holiday effects. Now that really left me a great amount of impression because another experience I can share with you guys is this thing called a post earnings drift. So I learned about that drifting effect both in school as well as on trading floor. And then now this book is talking about it, right? It's talking about holiday effects. So why do I want to say that in regards to holiday effects? So how do we connect the dots here? So holiday effects is related to what's going on whenever you have a holiday national holiday, international holiday, so on and so forth. Now that's of course important, but I think it can be more generalized than that. Holiday is a particular day of an event where certain things change or certain things are expected to change. It doesn't have to stay with calendar year holiday, right? You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas doesn't have to stay with that, although that can certainly be called holiday effects. So the experience here I want to share in relate to the book is this holiday is really just talking about a big event. For financial data, of course, earnings call is a big event. That is the time when you update your financials and companies don't update their financials that often. You update four times a year. So something like that is considered definitely new information coming to the market. Let's talk about that, right? Let's not miss that. So. Here, what we oftentimes see in regards to the effect of post-earnings drift is 
let's say you have a stock shooting up 10-15% because of a good earnings call, the drifting part, right, that is called the post-earnings drift effect, which says that it is oftentimes observed that whenever you have an upward shift because of your earnings call, then the stock price will slowly drifting up even after that event happens. So we are talking about a fundamental upward shift of your data from that day happen, from that event starts. So it changes pretty much everything. Throw numbers off the chart, right? That's something you cannot ignore. So I'm glad that this book is also talking about that. And then there's so many things I can't even cover in this video, right? This trend, there's also change points, outliers, how to handle uncertainties, and so on and so forth. All these are amazing topics to learn about when we're handling financial data. Or on top of that, just handling any time series data in general. The last thing I want to say is part three, which is the diagnostics part. Coming from healthcare, I particularly like the word how to diagnose your model, right? And that's also related to this one keyword in the industry, it's called explainability. Every stakeholder will ask you the exact same question whenever you have a model that's highly predictive, right? How do you explain it? And that's precisely correct. How do you explain it? So part three, talk about all these amazing tools, loss functions, performance metrics, uh, experiments that you can run to gain an understanding of how your model is doing what it says it does, right? So uh, let's take cross-validation, for instance. You have your good old school K4 cross-validation. Uh, of course, you can use that, right? But of course, in financial data or just in general time series data, the K4 cross-validation doesn't really take time into consideration. Uh, it's more of a, a random shuffle and you cut into K sets. Now, that's no good, right? Because we want to understand the impact of that sequential data when you give it time. So. This is other thing called a forward chaining cross validation. And the good thing about this book is it shows you the code of how to do that. A couple of years ago, when I was doing the exact same thing, I actually have to code this thing complete from scratch. And let me just tell you guys, that's not a fun thing to do, right? Um, I think about the experiment, I think about the procedure. You want to have a window that either fix or uh, vary. The length of the window doesn't matter you can change that later right let's say you have a fixed window and you're moving that window forward and then every part of the window you have a training set validation set and testing set and you can kind of think of in your head how that pipeline looks like right you have a big for loop you have to assign different index right all those things matter so i'm grateful that the part three of this book actually shows you uh, some of the leeway around that so you don't have to do that. There's a few lines of code that you can play around with and that will give you the correct results. So with that being said, there's still a lot of things I want to cover but couldn't get time to cover that. And, but that's okay. I hope this video shares a good amount of information with you guys about this title. And let me just say this. If there's an expert in time series modeling, they will absolutely know most of the topics in this book. Right, and here we are, have this book here right in front of us. Why don't you just get started with it? So with that being said, I hope you like the channel. If you do, give a like and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.